So today I'm going to be talking to you as part of the Lithium for UK consortium. My name's Lucy Crane and I am a geologist with a company called Cornish Lithium. And the Lithium for UK project is Cornish Lithium working in partnership with the Natural History Museum and mining consultants Wardell Armstrong. So yeah, thanks for having us. So I just wanted to kind of set the scene globally at the moment. So Ema alluded to the recent report that came out from the World Bank, which has looked at what is going to be the mineral intensity of us combating climate change. And arguably, Corona might have thrown a spanner into the works, but combating climate change is one of the biggest challenges that we're facing at the moment. And actually, if we want to beat this two degrees, we're going to have to produce a lot of low carbon technologies. So decarbonizing the economy, moving away from our reliance on fossil fuels, means that we need to produce things that can capture wind energy, solar energy, geothermal energy. And these low carbon technologies such as wind turbines and solar panels and actually batteries to store these renewable energies all require us to mine a hell of a lot of minerals. And this recent report that came out from the World Bank, they estimate that the demand for battery metals is going to jump 500% for things like lithium and cobalt by 2050 from the levels that we produced it at last year. So that's pretty significant and it means that as geologists and engineers we're going to have to have some pretty big challenges. We're going to have to explore for these critical raw materials in new places and new jurisdictions. We're going to have to try harder to extract them from deeper depths or potentially we need to consider deposits that have previously been thought of as unconventional. And in the lithium world that means that we might look at producing lithium from mica minerals instead of just spodumene, or we might look at extracting it from geothermal waters as well as these salar brines where we typically find it. Please so just to interrupt you, sorry, we're still looking at your old screen. Are you? Yeah. Are you? So I wanted to interrupt before we get to see any juicy pictures and, and uh, images that you've got. Aha, there we go. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Right. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, if we're going to be producing all of these low carbon technologies to help us combat climate change, what actually is the point of that if these low carbon technologies themselves have got strong embodied carbon impacts associated with their production? And so this is where responsible sourcing really comes into play. And the World Bank actually have an initiative called Climate Smart Mining, which kind of says, look, it's not just the miners who need to be responsible for the impacts of what they're producing, but the people who are producing these low carbon technologies also need to take responsibility for their portion of the supply chain. I think the COVID-19 crisis has kind of thrust into the spotlight these global supply chains as well. And especially from what we're seeing in the UK and Europe, there was already a drive for actually, you know, economies are realizing that low carbon technologies are going to be a huge part of their future economy and also the future impacts that they're having and the ability to meet these climate change targets. Um, but I think COVID-19 has really thrust these into the forefront and actually we're starting to see now that places such as the UK, the EU, the States are really starting to think that actually, hold on, we might have not been producing these raw materials ourselves in the past, but actually if we've got the ability to produce some of these raw materials that are going to be so critical to us, then maybe we should start to explore what those options are now. And so we're going to look at lithium today. And lithium is a key component of lithium ion batteries. And these lithium ion batteries are important for grid storage of renewable energy, but actually they tend to be the, the power source for electric vehicles. And car manufacturing is so important to the UK and the EU economy. So as we transition away from our reliance on fossil fuels and towards producing electric vehicles, the EU and the UK want to kind of keep their market shares. So there's also an economic reason for trying to have a su secure supply of these critical raw materials. So what's the current state of play? And this map on the left here is actually, well, it's three years out of date now, so I do need to find a new one. But it's a really neat map that just shows that the dominance of current lithium production is from salar brine deposits in South America and from hard rock from a mineral called spodumene in Australia. So these produce the vast majority of the world's lithium today. And what's also interesting about this map is the complete lack of any significant production from North America, from Europe, from Asia or from Africa. There are exploration projects in these areas now, some of them are coming into development, but there's no significant production still. 
It's also worth noting that although China might not have a huge share of primary production, it does have a huge amount of the world's ability to produce battery quality chemicals. So mineral concentrates from Chile, from Argentina, from Australia, will more often than not be shipped across to China. And that's where they'll be upgraded into battery quality lithium chemicals that can then be made into battery cells and battery packs. And then they might be shipped back to the UK. And something that we're finding from the work that we've been doing with consultants such as Minviro, who look at the life cycle assessment projects, we're seeing that although these transport distances can be huge, what's actually really important on the overall impacts of producing lithium in these different ways is the energy mix of these, you know, what's powering these processing plants. If it's a big coal powered plant, so, you know, Chris has mentioned the carbon impacts of that. Whereas if you can produce a lithium from, you know, a source that's powered by geothermal energy that can have a huge huge impact on limiting those um, limiting those so this is an interesting graphic from a company called infinity lithium and they've got a european lithium project that's in development at the moment and they've done some research that shows that, that on average the distance traveled by the lithium contained within an electric car battery in the in europe at the moment could actually, it could have traveled 50,000 kilometers around the world for different steps of the supply chain before it's actually driven a single mile. And, you know, there's an argument that localizing the production of this supply chain, so having all of these things close to each other, could potentially reduce the carbon impact of the lithium production to up to a tenth of what it currently is. So, what is Lithium for UK? This is a project, so it's a feasibility study, um, not a feasibility study in the mining sense, a feasibility study in the Innovate UK sense. And we're a consortium comprising of Cornish Lithium, the Natural History Museum, and mining consultants Wardell Armstrong. And we're basically looking at, is it ever going to be viable to produce some lithium in the UK for use in UK EVs? Um, the Faraday Battery Challenge, for those of you who haven't heard of it, is a government scheme and it's about 250 million pounds to look at you know increasing our competitiveness with battery technology and as far as i'm aware of that 250 million pounds our little project which is about half a million pounds is the only one that's looking at actually how do we source these lithium materials so all of this research is going on into developing better batteries setting up the supply chains much higher up but we're the only people looking at where do we actually get the lithium from so how much lithium do we need in the UK? If we assume that at some point in the future, we're going to still be producing around one and a half million cars a year, if those cars are all electric, which is going to take a while for that to happen, though by 2030, the UK government want all new cars to be electric, but that's new cars. Um, if we assume that they each contain 30 to 50 kilos of lithium carbonate equivalent, that corresponds to about 15 to 20% of the current global production of lithium carbonate. So the UK is going to be a pretty significant customer globally for lithium. And actually, we're finding that we do have the potential in the UK to produce some of this lithium. And, you know, the UK's got prospective geology. It just hasn't really had a metal mining industry for 20, 30 years. The first lithium iron battery was commercialised in 1991. So, um, you know, lithium ion batteries. Nobody was exploring for lithium whilst metal mining was happening before. And so we're really reevaluating the potential of the UK to produce some of these battery metals. So the Lithium for UK project is really focused on the upstream part of the supply chain. And in the UK, we're looking at unconventional sources of lithium. So I mentioned that a lot of the world's lithium is currently produced from a hard rock mineral spodumene or from salar brine deposits, which occur in really arid areas such as the Atacama Desert. We don't have those in the UK. There's some spodumene up in Scotland, there's some in Ireland, but the majority of the lithium minerals are contained within mica deposits, so it's a different family of minerals. We've also got the potential for lithium contained within geothermal waters as well. Both of these have previously been considered unconventional and haven't been proven on a commercial scale yet, so there's still work to do. We're also looking at producing battery quality chemicals. What are the stages we need to take? So it's all very well and good producing a mineral concentrate of your lithium, but it's that next stage to, to, to convert it into something that's battery quality, so it's high enough in lithium, but also contains minimal impurities that battery, battery processes can actually work with. And it's that key missing step that not too much research has been done to before.
And what we're finding is a really exciting opportunity is actually in five to 10 years time, there's going to be quite a few lithium ion batteries that need to be recycled and as they're coming out of electric vehicles. And when you recycle a lithium ion battery, you get this thing called the black mass. And kind of like what Ema was saying, there's actually a, there's a lot of useful metal in that black mass that at the moment isn't being extracted because it's not economically viable to do so. But what would be really neat is if we can find a way of, at some point from that black mass, can we use a recycled feedstock alongside a primary feedstock to produce battery quality chemicals? Who knows? So as part of the project, we've been mapping across the UK. We've done a hard rock sampling campaign across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. We've also done a groundwater sampling campaign just across the southwest of England. And unfortunately that got curtailed with Corona. So hopefully we'll be going up to the peaks at some point soon, but who knows? And we've also been taking some of these hard rock samples and we are using them to see if working with Wardell Armstrong, if we can actually produce the mineral concentrate and then convert that to battery quality chemicals. And there's a battery producer based down in Cornwall called PV3 Technologies that we're hoping if we can produce enough battery quality material, they're actually going to make a little Cornish battery out of it, which would be really neat. And then we're also looking at if we're going to actually produce lithium in the UK, what is the supply chain that's currently there, where are the gaps, where are the opportunities in the supply chain. And something that's come, come up in our research, this might be too small to see, but on the left is a map of exploration and development projects in Europe. And you can see that there's actually quite a lot going on. And on the right hand side is a map that shows either battery plants or gigafactories that are planned or in production in Europe. And the real missing stage here, that key missing stage is where are we going to convert these minerals into battery quality materials? So it's fine if you, all of these projects produce a mineral concentrate. At the moment, that's all going to have to be shipped to China before then being shipped back to Europe to be then used in the battery mega factories. So there's a real missing link about where are we going to convert these battery quality materials? I haven't got time to touch on this in too much detail, but Rob Pell from Enviro, I think is doing a talk tomorrow morning and he's brilliant. And we've been finding that life cycle assessments are a really useful tool to actually consider the impacts of what you're producing at each stage of the project. So we've been working with Enviro to do a very high level life cycle assessment of the different production routes for lithium that we have in the UK and comparing them to where we currently source lithium from. So from spodumene in Australia or from South America salar brines. And you can see here, so zinwaldite and lipidolite are mica minerals and geothermal brines on the right hand side. And you can see that these unconventional sources have a much wider range on the block, box plot than spodumene and salar brine. And that's because they're not being done commercially yet, they're, they're, they're not as well constrained. But what you can see is that actually the length of these box plots there's a real difference in the water consumption, for example. So we can tailor our production routes to make sure that we're minimizing our water consumption impacts, we're minimizing our carbon impacts, we're minimizing our land use impacts. And at each stage of the process, life cycle assessments can be really useful tools to help towards this. The thing I found really interesting when I first looked at this graph was that actually it looks like the relative water consumption of a salar brine isn't that much, whereas it's always in the news telling us how, you know, water producing lithium by evaporation ponds in South America is quite often in the news because they're really water sensitive areas. And that, that is the key point here. Although relatively you use a lot less water to produce lithium from a salar brine than you do from producing spodumene, it means that the relative impact of producing from a salar brine in they, they're in much more arid areas, they're in much more water scarce areas. So although it might not be that much compared to how you produce spodumene, the relative impact in these areas is actually really significant. So there's a lot to think about. So just to summarize, and it's been a bit of a whistle stop tour, there is the potential to produce a responsible supply chain where every, every stage is accountable and you can measure and you know, mitigate its impacts in the UK. We've produced a really neat little video that gives an overview of LI4 UK. Um, and I'd encourage you all to go to YouTube and have a look at it. But what, what I'd like to 
people to take away from this talk is that actually we've got a huge challenge ahead of us in combating climate change. And as geologists and engineers, we've got a key role to play in that by finding and extracting the minerals that are going to be key. However, if we've got these low carbon technologies, such as wind turbines and solar panels, their impacts are actually going to be dramatically reduced if we're not producing them as responsibly as we possibly can. And there is the opportunity to make each stage of the supply chain much more responsible. I haven't got time to touch on the Climate Smart Mining Initiative from the World Bank, but it's fantastic and it really gives guidance and you know, attributes responsibility as to who should be, you know, who should be taking ownership of measuring these impacts and actually mitigating them. And just to summarise, I think there really is an exciting opportunity for the UK to start to produce some of these critical materials that the battery industry needs. Um, we just need to do it responsibly, we need to do it carefully, but I think it's a really exciting time. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you so, so much, Lucy. And as per usual, you can imagine that fantastic applause that is going on on the other side. <laughs> Muted, see Chris's friend. gloves <laughs> <laughs> brilliant um, so to that Lucy um, I've, got, I've got so many questions that, that I could ask you personally and I know that they're coming in here on the chat etc um, just but in the interest of time one quick question you mentioned that, um, that challenge with regards to the, um, the, the right quality of the battery acid that's required and what's going on in the UK at the moment to be able to address that challenge? The battery quality? Mm. Yeah, well, there's, there's a hell of a lot of work that is going on at the moment through the UK, and a lot of it is funded by the Faraday Battery Challenge. I think what's been missing so far, or in, in my experience anyway, is that kind of joined up thinking across the supply chain. You know, battery manufacturers are quite often really in touch with each other. They might be in touch with some of the lithium chemical producers, but actually at a mine level, you can alter the impurity content of the mineral, you know, the mineral concentrate that you're producing and things like that. And, um, you know, the impacts of producing lithium carbonate versus lithium hydroxide is a really interesting one as well, because at the moment producing lithium carbonate is what a lot of mines are doing, but it looks like battery technologies are going to be using lithium hydroxide in the future. And there are arguably bigger impacts associated with producing that lithium hydroxide. So I think what's really been missing is having this joined up thinking across the whole supply chain from primary production all the way through to the battery manufacturers and then the EV users. So, Brilliant. Yeah. No, fantastic. Thank you, Lucy. And I mean, I think to that as well, and again, we'll share all of these links online. Um, you mentioned the World Bank Climate Smart Mining Initiative. So Christopher Reeves has very kindly posted that here for all of us who's on, on Zoom. We'll also post it on YouTube. Um, and also in terms of that joined up thinking along the value chain for lithium, um, there was a conference that was run, oh, I mean, it was two years ago now that looked at exploration to end user for lithium that was run by the Geological Society. And um, so again, and we can share the link um, to, to everybody who'd be interested in that. Um, but thank you very, very much, Lucy. Another round of virtual applause for you. Thank you. <laughs>